Hilbert transform. So in case of Hilbert transform, uh, suppose uh, if I take the Fourier transform, so what will happen when I take the Fourier transform of any signal? So when we take the Fourier transform, the time domain signal is converted into frequency domain. And when we take the Laplace transform, then the time domain signal is converted into S domain. When we take the Z transform, then the discrete time signal is converted into Z domain. So in all other transform, the domain is changed that is from time to any other domain. But in case of Hilbert transform, the domain does not change. It means that it does not involve change of domain. So if the signal is in time domain, the after taking the Hilbert transform, we will get the time domain signal only. So this is the first difference of uh, Hilbert transform with any other transform. So let us write this first point that it does not involve change of domain. It does not involve change of domain. Now the second point. When we take the Fourier transform, Suppose I take the Fourier transform of delta t, it is equal to 1. So as we can see that these two signals are uh, delta t is in time domain and 1 is in frequency domain. So what we will get? This one is the equivalent representation of delta t in frequency domain. Suppose this is delta t. at t equal to 0, this is t and when we take the Fourier transform, we get 1, this is 1 for all frequency, this is delta f, oh sorry, this is f Fourier transform of delta t, Fourier transform of delta so what we are observing that if we take the Fourier transform, it is the equivalent representation of same signal in frequency domain. But when we take the Hilbert transform, the domain does not change. So when the domain does not change, the signal should be changed because uh, we cannot represent the same signal in same domain that is nothing but the same signal. So what is the meaning of taking Hilbert transform? Right? So, when we take the Hilbert transform, since the domain does not change, the signal should be changed. But here, the delta t and its Fourier transform are equivalent representation in different domain. But in case of Hilbert transform, since the domain does not change, signal changed completely. So, our second point is. Hilbert transform of any signal is not an equivalent representation is not an equivalent representation is not an equivalent representation of the signal rather it is entirely different signal it is entirely different signal So whenever we take the Fourier transform, Laplace transform, Z transform, it is the equivalent representation of the signal in other domain. But when we take the Hilbert transform, since the domain does not change, signal changes completely. So it is entirely a different signal. Now third point, 
to take the hilbert transform of any signal change the phase by minus 90 degree without changing its amplitude okay so whenever we want to take the hilbert transform of any signal just change the phase of the signal by minus 90 degree without changing its amplitude so you can write hilbert transform or transformer is a minus 90 degree phase shifter without changing its amplitude without changing its amplitude this is the third point for example if the signal is x of t which is cos of omega ct and and we have to find the hilbert transform of this signal hilbert transform is represented by x cap of t x cap t is the hilbert transform of signal xt it is hilbert transform of xt and it is according to this particular point it is minus 90 degree phase shifter so to take the hilbert transform just shift the phase by minus 90 degree without changing its amplitude its amplitude is 1 so here also amplitude should be 1 and the phase should be changed by minus 90 degree so cos omega ct minus 90 degree gives sin omega ct so this is the hilbert transform of cos omega ct you can see that the domain is not changed here the domain is same here also the signal is in time domain here also the signal is time domain but the signal is completely different one is cos and other is sin both are different signal so the signal is entirely different whenever we take the hilbert transform fourth point this is about the time domain when the signal is given in time domain and which is especially in cos and sin then we can directly change the phase by minus 90 degree in the time domain itself but suppose uh, the signal is having uh, we have the spectrum of the signal spectrum of the signal it means that uh, we have the fourier transform of that signal then how do you take the hilbert transform so whenever the spectrum of any signal is given then to take the hilbert transform we multiply the positive frequency by minus j and negative frequency by plus j then the resultant signal is hilbert transform of that signal so you can also write this if we multiply spectrum of xt if we multiply positive spectrum of xt positive spectrum of xt that means positive frequency of x of f okay positive frequency of x of f if we multiply positive spectrum of xt that is positive frequency of x of f by minus j and negative spectrum of xt that is negative frequency of xf by plus j we get hilbert transform of xt that is x cap t 
इन फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन दैट इज फोर ईयर ट्रांसफॉर्म ऑफ एक्सकेप्टी वाई वी आर गेटिंग द रिजल्ट इन फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन बिकॉज वी आर डीलिंग इन फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन बिकॉज वी हैव द सिग्नल इन फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन एंड द पॉजिटिव फ्रीक्वेंसी इज मल्टीप्लाई बाई माइनस जे एंड निगेटिव फ्रीक्वेंसी मल्टीप्लाई बाई प्लस जे इट मीन्स दैट वी आर डीलिंग इन फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन एंड वेन वी डील इन फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन द रिजल्ट विल ऑल्सो बी इन फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन सो दैट्स वाई वी गेट द स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ हिलबर ट्रांसफॉर्म नॉट द हिलबर ट्रांसफॉर्म we get the spectrum of hilbert transform and after getting the fourier transform of hilbert transform we will take the inverse fourier transform to get the hilbert transform in time domain so after this take the inverse fourier transform to get x cap t so this is the fourth point whenever the spectrum of any signal is given and we want to calculate hilbert transform just we have to keep this in mind that we have to multiply the positive frequency by minus j and negative frequency by plus j now what is if we are transmitting it uh, if we are giving input to the hilbert transformer how we will get the output and what is the characteristics of this hilbert transformer that we have to define so suppose there is a block named as hilbert transformer and output if you give input x of t you will get output y of t which is actually hilbert transform of input because this is hilbert transform if there is a differentiator we get the differentiated output if there is a delay we get the delay output if there is a integrator we get the integrated output so similarly because in this block it is written hilbert transformer it means that we will get the hilbert transform of the signal so this is the input x of t hilbert transform of this signal x of t we will get in the output and because this is a system this system will have some response let us say this response is h of t and the output y of t will be x of t convolve with h of t or the convolution integral we can write integration from minus infinite to infinite x of tau h of t minus tau d tau this is the output to get the output we can follow this and now taking the fourier transform of this expression we get y of f equal to x of f convolution sign will be changed into multiplication and we get h of f so we were saying that in frequency domain we will get hilbert transform that is fourier transform of hilbert transform so this y of f is nothing but the fourier transform of x cap t because this is y of t y of t is x cap t and we are getting here y of f that means the fourier transform of y of t so fourier transform of y of t it means there is a fourier transform of x cap t so this y of f is nothing but fourier transform of x cap t and this is equal to x of f multiplied with h of f and 
to take uh, to find the x cap t we have to take inverse Fourier transform of multiplication of these two. When we deal in time domain, we have to find this convolution integral that is minus infinite to infinite x of tau into h of t minus tau d tau and if we deal in frequency domain, then we have to multiply the spectrum of the signal in, into h of f, then we have to take inverse Fourier transform. So, uh, for the signal whose Hilbert transform is to be calculated we have to find the Fourier transform of that signal and then we will multiply it with h of f then only we will get the Fourier transform of Hilbert transform that is this one. So, here also we have written here that if we want to find Fourier transform of Hilbert transform that is this expression if we want to find this expression then what we have to do? If we want to find this expression, we have to multiply positive frequency by minus j and negative frequency by plus j and here in this expression, we are saying that we have to multiply the spectrum by h of f. So, both are same thing, here we have written in the mathematical form, here we have written in the words form. So, that is if we multiply x of f by h of f, so how do we find this h of f? this h of f can be found using this particular result and this result says that the positive frequency should be multiplied by minus j and negative frequency by plus j. So, there should be some signal or there should be some function which satisfy this condition that means the positive value should be multiplied by some value like minus j and negative frequency should be multiplied by plus j then what kind of signal can it be? So, uh, you know about the signum function, let us draw the signum first. What is this signum f? If I ask you to draw signum f, then what is this signum f? The signum f is defined as it is plus 1 for f greater than 0 and it is minus 1 for f less than 0. This is the definition of signum f. So, f greater than 0 means positive frequency and this positive frequency is plus 1. For the positive frequency, the signum function is plus 1 and this negative for this negative frequency, the signum function is minus 1. This is negative frequency. So, what this function shows that whenever the frequency is greater than 0, its value is plus 1. So, if we multiply any signal with this signum function, it means that all the positive frequency will be multiplied by plus 1 because for all the positive frequency, its amplitude is going to be plus 1. So, if you multiply any signal with this signum f, that means the positive frequency will be multiplied by plus 1 and the negative frequency will be multiplied by minus 1 because the signum f is having value minus 1 for all negative frequency. So, this is the way we can derive h of f. This h of f should be a signal which should have value minus j for positive frequency and plus j for negative frequency. So, how can we make the positive frequency minus j? So, here the amplitude is 1 that is why its amplitude is plus minus 1. If I multiply it by, if I multiply it by plus j, it means that its amplitude is plus j. So, we will write here plus j and minus j. This means this should be plus j and this should be minus j. Still our requirement is not achieved because we were saying that the positive frequency should be multiplied by minus j, but it is plus j. 
So, to multiply the positive frequency by minus j, it should be inverted, this should be negative and this should be positive. So, how can we invert this? So, to invert this, we just have to make minus sign here. We have to put minus sign here and in this case, this equation will become minus, this is j signum f and the minus j signum f will be this is minus j for positive frequency and this is plus j for negative frequency. So, for this the plot will be this should be minus j and this should be plus j. this is minus j signum f. So, what we find here is that if I multiply any signal with minus j signum f, if I multiply spectrum of any signal with minus j signum f, it means that all the positive frequency of that spectrum will be multiplied with minus j because for positive frequency this signum f is having minus j value. So, all the positive component of that frequency com, uh, that spectrum will be multiplied with minus j and all the component lies in the negative frequency will be multiplied with by plus j. It means that this particular case is satisfied. The sentence we have written here is satisfied if I multiply any signal spectrum by minus j signum f. So, here we have written here that x of f that is the spectrum of the signal whose Hilbert transform is to be uh, is to be generated or is to be fine is multiplied with h of f. So, this x of f is multiplied with h of f and that h of f should be minus j signum f. So, here we can find that h of f is minus j signum f. So, one thing we have calculated that is the transfer function of Hilbert transform. Whenever we multi multiply any signal spectrum with minus j signum f, or h of f that is the transfer function of Hilbert transform, we get the Hilbert transform but in frequency domain because we have multiplied x of f with h of f, we get the Fourier transform of Hilbert transform and after this we have to take inverse Fourier transform to get the signal in time domain. So, this is h of f. Now, uh, if we want to calculate in time domain then what we have to do because we have found the value in frequency domain we can easily find the value of this h of t by taking the inverse Fourier transform of h of f. So, let us take the inverse Fourier transform of h of f. So, once we get the h of t we can convolve it with the signal x of t and we can directly get the signal Hilbert transform in time domain. So, we have h of f equal to minus j signum f. Now, we have to take inverse Fourier transform here. So, what is the Fourier transform of signum t you should know? The Fourier transform of signum t is given by 2 upon j omega. If you know the basics of uh, Fourier transform. So, that is the signum t is having Fourier transform 2 by j omega or it can also be written as 1 upon j pi f. 
but the signum function is in frequency domain. So, to convert this signum t into frequency domain, we have to use duality property of Fourier transform. So, if we use the duality property, so we will replace this 1 upon j pi f by 1 upon j pi t replace f by t. So, now this signal is in time domain and its Fourier transform and its Fourier transform will be when we convert this signum t that is we when we convert this t by minus f when we replace this signum uh, t by minus f then we will get signum minus f which is the Fourier transform of 1 upon j pi t. But we required to calculate but we need to calculate this uh, Fourier transform of j signum f with minus sign here signum minus f is there. So, we have to multiply by j. So, if we multiply both the side by j that is we get 1 upon pi t whose Fourier transform is j signum minus f j signum minus f and signum is an odd function signum is an odd function if you will calculate like this x of t is equal to minus of x of minus t that is odd signal and x of t equal to x of minus t that means even signal. So, signum is an odd function odd signal. So, when you calculate you can uh, find this this that that is a signum is an odd function. So, we can write minus j signum f minus j signum f x of minus t that is minus of x t. So, minus of x t x t that means signum f t or f both are same you can write in frequency domain also the condition of even and odd will remain same. So, here minus j signum f is in frequency domain and its inverse Fourier transform is 1 upon pi t that means we have found the inverse Fourier transform of h of f that is h of t. So, here we can write now h of t is 1 upon pi t. So, this is h of t which is very important and this is h of f that is also very important. In case of Hilbert transform you should remember these two formulas or these two result that is whenever you want to calculate Hilbert transform you have to convolve the signal by 1 upon pi t or you have to multiply the signal with minus j signum f. Now, y of t which is Hilbert transform of signal x of t directly in time domain can be calculated by this formula here we have written already minus infinity to infinity x of tau h of t minus tau. So, x of tau and h of t minus tau. So, t is replaced by t minus tau we will get pi t minus tau in denominator and d tau. So, this is the formula to calculate Hilbert transform directly in time domain. So, there are two ways to calculate Hilbert transform first by using this formula second by multiplying the Fourier transform of the signal whose Hilbert transform is to be transmitted by minus j signum f and then taking the inverse Fourier transform. So, you can directly multiply with the minus j signum f in frequency domain and then you can take inverse Fourier transform then also you will get x cap t which is Hilbert transform of x of t. So, now we will uh, discuss the properties of Hilbert transform. So, this is the way we calculate the Hilbert transform next we will see properties of Hilbert transform.